How's it going? My name is IPA fan. This is Church of Chug, and uh, we'll just go around and introduce you. Everybody's here. Uh, Ricky. All right. So um, I am going to be doing a, what was it called? Lin Linman's Creek, all right? Uh, Cherry Lambic beer, all right? Cool. And Beer Lover. Uh, I'm actually going to reserve my palate for the chug and drink a Berliner Weiss. I want to drink my Lambics and enjoy it. And this is, I don't know if you all have noticed this before, or seen it before. It's the nice. Berliner Weiss collab, Evil Twin, Burley Oak, 4.8%, doing it light. Nice. Right. J-Hook? I will be chugging uh, Modern Times uh, Caliban. It's a hazy IPA, 6.2%. Drunken Monkey? 6.9. So I got this uh, Lindemann's uh, Raspberry Frambo Lambic. Frambo. Um, yeah. That's right. what I guess I'm going to chug that. Uh, ice Queen. Not really looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be on the same boat as you. I'm going to chug the strawberry one from Lindemann's. I got a couple of these, so I have different flavors. All right, and our special guest today to make sure that we don't sound like complete idiots, we don't know what we're talking about, and the scientific <laughs> stuff behind it is the one and only Henry. And so I'm going to be uh, chugging the Lindemann uh, peach flavor, uh, Lambic, so. Cool, and I am just going to stick with a West Coast uh, single mango from uh, Hamilton. So, Best coast, baby. Drunken Monkey, you're in the center. How about you, Count us down? He's special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, glasses up. This oh, looks like dark. straight. Yeah, this is, oh, God. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Cheers. 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 I didn't hate that. That was actually pretty damn good. They're not bad. They really aren't that bad. That's sweet. No, that, that was really good. Really yep. Yeah. And the, the younger the bottle, the sweeter is it, it is. If it ages, then that sweetness kind of dissipates. It's like, some, it's like chugging the fruit is sour. <clears throat> My mango right now. Uh, I had no mango. It was just West Coast pine in my mouth right now. I'm chewing on pine. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? <laughs> I, would definitely, I would definitely drink some water, Cisco, before you decide to taste that um, lambic after doing an IPA. <laughs> Great idea. And uh, let's go to introduce our uh, lambics. I got, I can't even pronounce it, but thankfully we have Henry. I got this, which I'm not really oh, sure. Ode. What it is. Ode. It's Ode. 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 Yep. Okay, and I'm going with this. It's a big old bottle, six <clears> percent, <throat> uh, made by in Belgium by Hausen Artisanal or something like that. Uh, okay, Ricky. All right, so I got the three. Was it three font Fontaine, which is also a Old Guez. It's a, uh, um, I guess it's a blend, right? A blend of one, two, and three year old lambics. I did not know that one. I've seen these bottles all the time, and I never got one. I'm pretty excited to see what it's what it's about. Cool. Al, um, I also have a Frambois from Boone Brew, uh, Boone Brewing. Uh, this is a two-year oak fermented uh, lambic, and it's a 2018. And I also have a 2016 Guez uh, Mirage Parfait, which is also a Ode Guez. And this one is three years aged in oak, and it is a 2016. Cool. Drunken Monkey. So I'm drinking the same thing that I just chugged because I got a, a big 750 milliliter bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't see any of the, the in other information that you guys have, like of how long it was aged or even the um, ABV or anything. So it's no just a Lindemann's Frambo Raspberry Lambic. And on the back, it says, just drink it. <laughs> Open and drink. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Basically. All right, J Hope. Yeah, I got the same thing as Rich, the uh, the Lambeau. Uh, okay. Funny story, my cork just broke on top of it. <laughs> so I got to go grab a new man. one. Right. 
Holy shit. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Cool. All right. Uh, so um, Ice Queen, I believe you're next. What do you got? Um, I also have a Lindemans and this is the peach one. So I I am was I felt like the biggest basic bitch today. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Bevmo because I knew they had some and they had this like four pack that it came with the glass. So I was like, all right, I'll try that. But this <gasps> was the only one they had. So cool. Uh, and last but not least, Henry, what do you got? So I ended up getting three bottles, but you know, I, we only got 30 minutes for a show, but I'll, pre I'll, I'll present each one. Uh, so I got this old Tel Queen, which is a uh, traditional Belgian Lambic that's aged with plum, uh, but this is unfiltered, unpasteurized. So this is basically your typical traditional Lambic that you get. Then I have a uh, Old Dues by Old Breezel, which is uh, one of the oldest Lambics uh, breweries in Belgium. And then their Creek version, which is a lambic that is re-fermented with cherries. Cool. So right off the top, one thing I noticed about these beers is definitely the funk that comes out of the nose. But uh, just the fact that you have to open them differently is something that us craft drinkers normally would not go through. So I just thought that stood out. And you know, we're just scrambling for a, for a bottle opener and shit. Yeah, there you go, man. Stay home. In case you see him fighting with something, it's the bottle. He's trying to open it, man. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. So what do you guys think of your beer so far? What's the review? Great juice. Who are you picking? <laughs> I mean, that. this is this is like Welch's raspberry juice or something like that. Like, it's very fruity very sweet oh. it it does have a um a kind of a bit of a funk to it but it doesn't Ooh. match the flavor like the flavor is still like super sweet it doesn't taste funky right. so so i gotta say the first one i had was it had had fruits in it right so it was very sweet obviously i chugged it so i couldn't really get a, you know a, a good good taste but it was definitely very sweet, very um, it, it's almost like a fruited sour. Um, this has no fruits in it, and it's a, a guaz, which I'm assuming it like uh, like Henry had told us, it's a combination of one, two, and three year old um, batches mixed together. Um, this is more my 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 uh, my wheelhouse right here. This is like a good funk. I love the cheesy, you know, moldy cheese funk. Mm. That, that you get um, the dryness in the mouth, the little bit of bitter. Yeah, I'm definitely loving this right here. Uh, Al, what do you got going, man? You're you're pretty experienced with this stuff too. Uh, yeah, this is just mine. Uh, again, I'm drinking the the Frambois, uh, just raspberry jam up front. It does. It is. There's no hop character to it whatsoever. It's a little earthy, a little barnyardy, a little horse blankety, a little white grass, but mostly it's that raspberry jam that comes through and it's kind of like acidic. But it is it is pretty freaking nice in my opinion. So to me, this one is, uh, I mean, you can call him James Brown because it's funk definitely on this. <laughs> and it's, I agree with uh, with Ricky, everything you said, the the whole cheesiness, the, the farmhouse-ness, the, but to me, it's, I agree with all of it, but instead of on the positive side, I'm towards the negative side. This is not for me at all. Um, hoping that with with certain sours, I've noticed that it almost burns my taste buds off, and then you keep drinking it, it almost just it tastes so much better after some of those like sour IPAs. Mm. Just they just burn off, and all of a sudden it tastes sweet, and it just that deliciousness comes through. So I'm coming to hoping that's what's going to happen with this. Henry, am I completely off or am I kind of going towards the right no, way? Uh, you're actually on point. Uh, a lot of people that actually start drinking traditional sours. So traditional sours are actually made in Belgium. That's where they originated from. Uh, so drinking traditional sours like Creeks, Framboise, Lambics, um, all those are going to feel that burn right up on the front. You feel like the enamel is going to strip off your teeth. Yes. You know, because of the tartness that it has. But as it opens up to the air, that flavor profile changes and actually mellows out. 
Nice. Hmm. So where, where does this style differ, or where does this style branch off from, like, a Saison? Yes. So a Saison, a Saison is French. Oh, uh, okay. And Just different areas. Yeah, Lambic is uh, a particular valley in, in Belgium, which I think is a Zeni Zen, Zen Valley. I forgot how right. to pronounce it. But it's a particular <clears throat> valley in Belgium where they come from. So there will be nothing that's made in the U.S. that they can call a Lambic? Actually, the only people that come close to calling them Lambics, and they actually got permission from the Belgians to do that, is Jester King. Mm. Okay. So Jester King, uh, they do... So the way Lambics are brewed, it consists of anywhere between 70% uh, barley and then 30% unmalted wheat. So those are the only two ingredients. You do a traditional brew, it gets brewed, but you don't cool it down. You actually put it into what's called a cool ship, a stainless steel square container. And that is actually taken outside. Yeah. And microorganisms from the air ferment it. Mm. Right, so you get that spontaneous wow. fermentation. <clears throat> yep. So that's how come you get, because <clears throat> People know the whole microorganism environment. That's how come you get the cheese, the earthiness of it. You get okay. the blanket. And then in typical, like for mines, you know, the taste was peach, but the smell is straight up farm. Walking into a barnyard. This is cool. Something similar you know? to what they call a farmhouse ale here. Yeah, very traditional to oh, what a farmhouse ale is here. Yep. And it's funny you mentioned it because I noticed on the bottle, and I was going to mention it later on the back of my bottle. It does say 60% uh, malted barley, 40% unmalted wheat. It says old hops and water. <clears throat> so, old lambics are all, yeah, old lambics are brewed with all uh, basically old school noble hops. Noble hops, right. Okay. Uh, Do you so know any in particular that they use? Uh, <laughs> not at the top of my head. Uh, a lot of them won't actually tell you what they brew it with, what hops are actually put in there. Nice. You know, some of these are very, very secretive recipes. Right. Sam, what comes to you? Uh, you have like three, right? <laughs> yeah, this is the peach one and it tastes very much so like peach, just like Henry's in, but it smells real earthy when you smell it. Um, I think maybe because this is a more commercialized lambic and it's like bigger and you know you always kind of down the flavor a lot when it's something that's mass produced like this right. um, as compared to like Ricky's who's got three different ones blended together and you know the actual specific ones for breweries but it's very calm like I think my friends that don't like beer would probably like this I could get away with this you know um because it's very fruity and it's easy to drink <clears throat> It's almost like mm. champagne beer to me a little bit, like the champagne no, beer. So I'll take it to a wedding instead of drinking yeah, champagne. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, I think you're completely right, Sam, with the whole idea mm -hmm. of like, that's not something traditional beer drinkers would go for. But on the flip mm -hmm. side, if, if you don't drink beer, you might still be open to this. How mm -hmm. do you think that crosses over, Henry? Like, why do you think that is mm -hmm. something that like, is it? that whole idea like people back in the day would just drink wine so here's some beer type thing or is that or am I completely off on that well I think nowadays we you know we're exposed to a more variety of hops you know especially with the with the IPAs mm -hmm. and you know when lambics were made they only had the ingredients they had and that's why I said it's only two ingredients mm -hmm. to make this actual beer you know barley and 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 un, and un, um, <clears throat> unmalted wheat wouldn't it be three water oh, yeah, water, of course, you know. And the fruits. And your hops, yeah. so it's actually four ingredients. Fair, fair enough. Um, but I think, uh, like Ice Queen said, this is something that you can actually introduce a non-beer drinker to just because you have that champagne-like. Mm -hmm. And he probably won't believe it's beer. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. These, like I said, these are, these are your very traditional beers. I mean, these are your first beers that were probably ever, you know, besides... Besides an IPA, which I think the IPA was actually somewhere in the 1500s, 1600s when it was first introduced. Whenever um, the British were in. Yeah. India. And I think uh, Lambics came around about the 1800s or so. 
Okay. Interesting. Yeah, this one says since 1822, they, they've been making this recipe. So. Yeah, damn. 1869. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got a question uh, for Henry. Um, it might be a dumb question, but um, I really like Belgians. Uh, what separates this from like the quadruples and all that stuff? Like, is it because they just add the fruit or what? So a quadruple won't be what's called spontaneous fermentation. Like I said, this won't be outside in nature gathering, you know, the microorganisms from the environment. A quad, same thing. You have all your basic ingredients to, to brew it, but then they use candy sugar that's put into the brewing process and then a yeast that can hold that high alcohol content because a quad anywhere between what 11 to 14 percent mm -hmm. you know so it's just different brewing methods when it comes to making it so, so do they like ex expose it to more like bacteria and like different kind of like yeast and all that stuff so quads do not use any bacteria whatsoever because yeah, that would quads make it a sour if they do yep your, so your quads your doubles and your triples that does not use any bacteria that's strictly uh high mm -hmm. alcohol content yeast and usually candied sugar and a specific bill grain. Got it. Okay. So uh, both for uh, Henry and Al, like what's something that you would generally tell somebody if they were going to be trying um, Lambic for the first time, which at least I definitely am. And I'm feeling at least one or two other people on this are as well. Like, what would you tell them? Like, be prepared for this. Uh, keep an eye out for this. Don't judge this. Like, how would you explain it to a non-traditional Lambic drinker? Henry, you want to go first? I would tell them to buy this first, to be yes. honest. Yeah. You, know, you want would to absolutely go with a fruited Lambic first to introduce them to the funk and those off-putting flavors that somebody's used to drinking when they're drinking IPAs all the fucking time. <laughs> so yeah, I would go with a fruited one first and then go to a regular Lambic and then the Guez. So yeah, I the just, Guez is really funky. This is- Yeah, I just jumped to the end <laughs> This thing wanna, tastes like somebody just soaked a fucking horse blanket in seltzer and just gave me a pour. That's what this tastes like. And it's actually really good. I, <laughs> you, you literally want to hook them. You know, so someone that has never tried a lambic before, get them introduced to those flavors. You know, start off with the sweetness and be like, but keep an open mind because they're not all like that. You know, there's some that are going to taste like horse blanket. There's some that are going to taste like molded cheese you know but those are traditional flavors mm. that are found in traditional lambics right for, all right so for the church of chug i mean henry I, I already know your answer pretty much who had who was put off by the flavors when they got when they drank it initially the non-fruited ones all right I, so I, ipa fan and right right so it was kind of off-putting at first but is it getting a little bit more smoother as you drink it, it it's definitely getting smoother but um as weird as it sounds i've always liked blue cheese so the blue cheese is actually kind of getting me more into it which okay. i would never think with a beer that i'm like blue cheese let's do yeah, blue it, cheese. It, it can be a kind of a shock to a bear palate and once your palate's primed up it's kind of like the flavors kind of marry a little bit better like this was really really horsey at first but now it's a little more mellow it's a little more fruitier so yeah and and the ones who have the fruited Lambics, they're not so shocking. That fruit really masks it. And the longer that fruit is in there, the less you taste of that fruit. So the uh, the Linderman's usually is a younger bottle. I, I really so wish, I really wish I had started with the Linderman's just cause this, um, if all I had was the first couple tastes and I was a chicken, if you will, and was like, that's it, I'm scared. I'm not drinking any more of this. Then I would have never tried Lambics again in my life. But just because continually drinking it right now i'm like i could see there's something there so i'm going to jump back down to the fruited ones and maybe it'll bring me back up to this because i'm definitely not going to get one of these gals or quez anytime soon but maybe i will go with a with a fruited lambic like maybe that could bring me back into the fold well you went you went balls out for your first time <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, no doubt sure bro i got so some awesome. advice <laughs> ahead of time man uh, hey man. when you get when you guys keep saying horse blanket, blanket, what does that mean? What's what? that? When you guys keep saying horse blanket, I, I literally think a blanket is on a horse. Yeah, what, what does that's that exactly mean? what I'm talking about. 
Where, it's like when you're standing at a barn and you smell that sweet manure in the air or a fresh fertilizer. Yeah. When you I was going to say, he, house, oh, wow. he was not raised near any barns. That's why. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, all right, all right. I'm like, when horse, somebody gets their lawn manicured, manicured and you smell that 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 fresh fertilizer, that's yeah. horse yeah. that sweet smell. You're going to get some of that too. That's not, that's not fresh. I won't get that from this, right? No, 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 no not that. No. This you would. This You'll is get more, it more on the traditional. The tra know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, total wine only had the the fruity ones. So they do. If you ever try a farmhouse ale, like a legit farmhouse ale, you'll smell it and taste it in that too. It's just, okay. It tastes like really. I'll go get one because I I, I want to say that I, I got some horse blanket on me and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ever get if you ever get a chance to taste Jester Kings, any oh, any of their farmhouse ales or their saisons or even their lambics, I would go there because there's a wide variety. Of different ones that he makes and i think he's found a niche in the states because he can pretty much please any palate yeah. of drinker because there's a wide variety but there's one in particular um speaking about someone had mentioned that hay character or the hay smell in it they actually brewed with hay in one what? of the farmhouse ales I wonder how that went down. Oh, that must have been dry as fuck when it was on the finish. That was insane of a taste, man. Like you talk about ninety percent of it was like manure. So Henry, <laughs> well, let me ask you: why, why is it that that one uh, Jester King? Why do you think that they are the ones that got like you know the backing from Belgium and not any other company that makes a, a tasty, you know, respectable lambic or quest? I just think because he. He went out there. He actually went out to Belgium. So I, I know I know Jeff personally. He used to be a lawyer in the Boston area and became a brewer and opened up Jester King. I actually met him at a at a beer festival a couple years ago. And um, he went out and actually seeked out permission. He actually took a couple of his bottles to Belgium and went to a couple of the breweries and asked for permission if he could brew it in the States. And they granted him the permission after tasting it. He literally, he literally was judged. He was literally judged to see if they were the same quality as the ones in Belgium. So uh, might seem uh, obvious, but how on earth do they control for um, the same type of beer being produced if they're doing it outside? So what they actually do is they'll take just the normal small batch, say like in an Erlenmeyer flask and let it ferment out. And they actually will separate cultures to see if that culture is actually good for the beer or if it's bad for the beer. If it's bad for the beer, then they won't brew it. But if that uh, microorganism is good, so typically you can put a cool ship underneath a fruit tree because the fruit skin itself is covered in yeast. So that's why a lot of people say wash your fruit you know, it's usually yeah. pesticides, bacteria, and there's yeast on the yeah. on the actual fruit. So you can take a handful of blueberries that you buy at the store, inoculate some wort, and it actually will ferment out. Oh, wow. Drop inoculate, Henry. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stop washing my fruit. Maybe I'll get that whole fermented thing in my stomach and just get some <clears> beer. But yeah, man, this is just years and years and years of them practicing and, and being able to say, look, the microorganism that we're brewing in is perfect for the beer we're brewing. And they never stop. <clears throat> Henry, just, just for the people who do watch this, um, again, can you elaborate on inoculation and what it actually means? Because some people don't know what inoculation means. Inoculation is just basically you're, you're, you're creating a seed within the wart, basically. And so you're, you're using the wart as the host for the yeast to actually grow. Right, so the yeast bacteria and the liquid combination is the inoculation. Is the inoculation, mm -hmm. yep. Cool. Uh, we have enough time for maybe a couple more questions, but before we do that, uh, Ricky, I just saw you cracking a new one. How is that? Yeah, oh, this is more of like that, that style that uh, Henry has. It's called, um, I don't even know how to say it, man. Turn the bottle. Ta you're ta talking. This is a lambic with blackberries. Yep. Yeah, blackberries. Now this is more of an in between because the first one was super sweet. Um, that that uh that creek was super sweet. The second one was cheesy and and funky. 
this one because of, I guess of the fruit, but not sweet. It still has that tartness, maybe because of the blackberries. But uh, um, this is really good. Um, if I had to pick between the three, I guess I'm, I'm going with this middle one here because you get a little little fruit, but you still get the funk. So this is damn. This is damn good. Is the uh, is the age on that bottle, Ricky? This one is uh, seventeen eighteen. So 2017, 2018, I guess. Oh, okay. Right. The, I thought you said 17, 18. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, Jesus, that's don't that's even open it. What the fuck? <laughs> Put it in the museum. <laughs> so on the, Sell that the, shit. On the last portion of your bottles, uh, I don't know if the Linda Mint actually has them, but anyone that has the traditional um, lambics, if you actually stir the last piece of it and pour it into your bottle, you actually get the yeast culture that it was oh, actually yeah, grown with. So mm -hmm. one one interesting thing that I've done because careful, I, Cisco, I, don't do it. I'm, I'm warning you, <laughs> just don't do it. Man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, uh, not. I'm gonna do it, but just don't do it. I'm, I'm looking out for you right now. Thank so you. one thing that's cool about that is, and I I've homebrewed quite a bit. We actually took several bottles of lambics and kept the bottom portion of it and reconstituted and actually made our own yeast batch nice. from the same yeast. And made a land. I've heard of people doing that with like some of those. Uh, well, back in the days, I heard people used to do that with like some of the uh, heady toppers and stuff like that. Yep. Like they would try to make their own, their own, you know, version with with the stuff that comes out the bottom of the cans. So, definitely not connected to too much other than what this is. Literally, the first lambic I've had, and this is the same first type of bottle I've had that even looks like this. I just want to point out, and you probably can't see it even if I zoom in, but on the very last line of all this like cool writing and everything and all the writing that it has on the bottom or side, it says, may cause health problems. I'm like, yeah, that's how you want to end your fucking sentence. Excuse my language. Like, <laughs> just out of all the information you could possibly give me, you could be like, oh, you know, don't drive while impaired and all that and, you know, whatever it is, but why go with that at the end? Just saying. So, so we have it. We have it at the end too, on some of the yeah, boxes, and may cause health problems. <laughs> oh yeah, operate uh, may cause health problems. Sure. Why mm -hmm. is that the last thing on these in particular? Just, just wondering. I have no clue. That is. That is projecting <laughs> alcoholism. Could be. Does anybody you're, else you're have fine. a best before date? No. Yeah. So you're thinking because of the wild yeast and the wild cultures and stuff that I mean, it's going to cause some type of. It's gonna cause somebody some reaction or something. Is that I what mean, you're thinking? Some people can probably get stomach problems if they actually eat, drink the yeast from it. You know, uh, that's a good point. But I know some of the bottles, like Cisco, Ricky, Beer Lover, you guys all have a best before date, pretty much. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I that's why I just asked you. Date. Yeah, sure. On your bottle. Yeah, but these dates are like 20, 29, 20, This is twenty. This is twenty thirty thirty nine. Damn. Yeah, so mine too. Twenty twenty nine. Age can age for up to twenty years. Right. Damn. These are all. Yeah. Anything that's got like the spontaneous or the uh, bottle condition, you can let them sit and hang out for years and years, and they'll still get better in time. Yep. I'll just buy. I'll buy another one and do that shit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see a best before. I do see the years that's in here. It's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So yeah, you're probably looking at about twenty twenty nine. Crazy. Uh, a best best before. Yeah. Right? Mm. Crazy. Yeah. You, you're not going to get a, bottle, a can of IPA to sit for uh, 15 years, man, that's for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, actually, there is one. And I, and I know we're off topic, but uh, Dogfish 120 can actually age for well, yes. years. Okay. Yeah. There is Sam a couple, all about and, that. That, and there's a reason for the 120. And, you know, yeah, there's yeah. definitely a reason why the 120 is what it is. <laughs> um, that's for next and you can barely that's get that bottle, too. So, with that being said, we are just about to be cut out. So, um, Thank you, Henry. I think I speak for everybody. It says we appreciate your knowledge in uh, helping us not sound uh, unlearned, Cheers. if you will. Uh, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thanks. Yes.